Hello everyone, welcome back to Jed Bedrock Aviation. In this video, I'm going to show you the graphics settings for a mid-end graphics card, specifically for VR and getting around 144 FPS uh, with the Valve Index. So, for starters, you want to go up to these three white bars, Options, and then over to Graphics. So this is where all your graphic stuff is, obviously, but there's some post-FX stuff I'm going to go over that is not in this area. It's actually over in main parameters over here, but we'll get to that in a little bit. So for starters, resolution, you want to keep it at auto-select. You can select your specific resolution of the game, but you want it on auto-select, so that way it selects the resolution of the monitor screen that it's on and uh, that's in the next section. So over to mode, I use full screen window. That's because it's full screen, but it also doesn't shut the game into a minimized form when I press the Windows key to tab out to work on like a YouTube video, uh, like to listen to music and stuff like that when I play. So I really like that. For options and monitor, you can select the monitor of your choice, and this is the monitor that War Thunder will show up on when it's uh, when it's displaying your VR. I just choose auto select, and by default, it will select your dominant monitor that you have selected in the Windows monitor selection. But you can tell it to do you know either or. Me personally, I just leave it on auto select. It's fine. VSync. This it does not apply to VR headsets. VR headsets do not have VSync technology, so don't bother with that. Even for monitors, don't bother with it unless you have a monitor that supports VSync. Otherwise, it just messes and uh, things up and causes screen tearing at higher res at higher FPSs. So XCSS is a advanced super sampling feature. I do not have a brand a new card, so I do not have access to this. Even though it displays, I can't click on it. NVIDIA DLSS, it's a special type of super sampling, and you can read the description on your own. Basically, what it does is it uh, shrinks the resolution of the game, and then it blows it up. It makes it larger to your resolution. Now, this is supposed to get a lot better performance for a higher resolution, but the end result is that you get a very fuzzy image, and it's very uncomfortable. I don't like it. Even with the DLSS sharpness all the way up, it's still really bad. Now, this here that I'm not going to bother to pronounce because I will butcher it, this is for when you're looking at a texture from an angle and not straight on. This is good for when you're looking around your cockpit and stuff. And Any higher than 4 is just too much, and any lower than 4 just kind of looks kind of bad. So I prefer using this on 4. For anti-aliasing, leave this at just none, because for some reason the anti-aliasing in War Thunder is really bad. It makes all the textures fuzzy. For SSAA, which is your normal super sampling anti-aliasing, it only lets you do four. Basically what this does is it takes the resolution that you're at, it scales it up four times, and then it squeezes it back down to the resolution you're using. So your computer is rendering an image four times bigger than what you're actually seeing, but because it's compressing it back down, you get a much clearer image at the cost of a lot of GPU usage. Now, if you choose not to use this and go with the more pixelated fuzzy, fuzzy image, it's fine, but for clarity, I prefer using this. The NVIDIA Reflex Low Latency, do not use this. Don't. The idea behind it is that it allows your graphics card to be a lot more responsive to what's happening in the game and allow it to run faster and better. For me, it just sucked so much GPU performance into nowhere. So don't use this. War Thunder is a slow enough game that you don't need your graphics card to be on, on crack. It'll be fine just turning it off. 
The performance matrix is actually a HUD option. I wish it would explain what it is. It's a HUD option. So basically what it is is when you're playing in the bottom left of your HUD you'll see FPS and on compact you see the latency of the server on the full it shows you more server details but I just use compact for texture quality I have it on high if you don't have it on high then you don't have access to the virtual and cockpit pilot body I personally can't live without that and so I have textures on high as well as the graphical fidelity when you're in the cockpit so I just prefer it on high and it doesn't affect it all that much shadow quality is medium you don't really need high medium is a lot better than most other games medium so medium is fine here effects resolution that's like explosions and stuff mediums fine just go with medium render resolution you want this all the way up basically what this is saying is that if your game is rendering in at 140p or 1440p then basically if you lower that on a 1440p monitor or in VR you're gonna be seeing a much lower resolution uh, game so you could be playing the game at 1080p on a 1440p monitor and it's gonna look like pixelated garbage so cloud quality and flight I have that at 50 percent there's only two op there's only two options uh, 50 and 100 I have it at 50 if you have it at zero the clouds look like a mist or a fog just sitting up in the air yes I'm aware what clouds are but they don't look anywhere close like real life where they have that body to them and the reflectiveness and kind of like the outer layer of that the clouds look like that light can bounce off of if you have it at zero they just they exist there they're like a, a misty puff but at 50 percent it's a nice middle ground between good looking clouds with defined shapes and curves and a you know loss in performance ground uh, cloud quality on ground if you're only doing air then I just have this on enough for when you're on the landing strip you're not going to be noticing them on the ground because the only times you're on the ground is if you're landing or dead so cloud, qual cloud quality on ground is uh, very low terrain quality uh, because you're in the air you're seeing a lot of terrain so I turn this all the way off you really don't notice it and you do get some help in the terrain quality from a post effects option so just leave this at zero tree range that is the range from you that trees go from low quality to high quality fidelity I have this really low you can turn it all the way off but I didn't because you want the trees around your airfield to look partially nice but you don't really notice it unless you're flying at treetop level in a heavy forest then you'll notice the quote pop in of the trees become higher fidelity but other than that tree range is pretty small particle density it's another one of those descriptionless ones but basically what it does is it's how nice things like sandstorms fogs mists uh, maybe even smokes and uh, smoke trails caused by damage itch is how many particles are in those things so if it's all the way off then a sandstorm will look like it you know is barely anything for airplanes you don't really need this other than maps where you have like a fog on the ground and stuff so I just have this at 50 percent and I, I like it where it is so then you have uh, grass range it's the same as tree range but I just lowered it all the way so this is one of your bigger ones SSAO quality screen space ambient occlusion what this means is that when light from the Sun comes into your cockpit the light will bounce around in the cockpit 
instead of hitting just where it hits, it bounces around and slightly illuminates things like it would in real life. That's what this is. And it's you, you notice it in the cockpit when the light is bouncing around. And it's really nice, but it's really intensive. You can turn this off and the game will still look great, but it just looks even better with SSAO turned on. Then you have reflection quality. That's the quality of the reflections caused by SSAO. So like reflections on your instrument boxes and your canopy and, and stuff like that. These three here are can be set to medium. You can set them to low, but once you do that, the game starts looking not so great, especially over water. So I just leave these at medium. Physics quality, it basically just says in the description destruction quality. So if a plane gets vaporized by a missile, the physics quality is how all their pieces act when falling through the air. It, it's not that intensive, so you can have that all the way up. Uh, these three are for tanks, so just do whatever you want with them. So cockpit mirror reflections quality, I have this turned all the way off. Basically what the cockpit mirror does is because it has to see behind you, it's rendering the world behind you instead of the world in front of your eyes. So what that means is that it's rendering your world twice, both in GPU and CPU. And the higher that uh, reflection quality, the higher resolution it's generating that world behind you. So it's kind of like double. So I turn this off and I've just been working on my spatial awareness to save the maximum uh, computing power. Object shadows are it's pretty basic. It says in the, the description, I have these off. You're not really going to notice. It doesn't apply to aircraft. You can still see airplane shadows. So this is like small things on the ground, mainly for tanks. Shadows on effects. This is like, will you see the shadow of an explosion on the ground? This is more of a, a tank thing. Advanced Shore, so you can turn that off. I personally like to have it on. It just does what it says. It puts waves on the shore. I do that because I like the world to feel real and not like it's standing still in time. Heat Haze, so this is that if you ever look at the top of your car on a hot day, that like watery shimmer right above the surface, that's Heat Haze. Now this doesn't apply it to the aircrafts, but what it does do is it applies it to the back of their engine. So if their engine is on, you'll see the heat haze coming out the back uh, when they're not running afterburner. So you're not going to see it on your plane, but you'll see it on other people's planes as they pass close or on the runway. Far terrain details, this is a tank thing. Lens flare is odd. I did a lot of testing with it and it doesn't seem to show up in VR, at least not for me. It shows up on desktop, but not VR. Again, this is for tanks. This is also for tanks. This is if you take a lot of screenshots. JPEG is just a lower file sized picture than PNG because PNG has some extra layers to it that JPEG doesn't. So it just depends on what you want. But it's a, a moot point because most uh, image editing software can change you know, one from the other, so it doesn't matter. Old video card support. I don't know how old your card has to be to use this, uh, but, you know, whatever. Uh, VR mode. All this does is it changes the game to VR if your headset is already on. I always boot up War Thunder from inside Steam VR, so I never use this button. Display mirror mode, this is just whatever eye you're looking out of. I found that at least for jets, the left eye looks better, so it's the one I go with. VR streamer mode, it sounds great, but when you realize what it's actually doing, it is actually pretty bad. Basically what it does is the black lines that show up on the actual desktop to represent your VR uh, lens, there's black lines there because it's rounded instead of 
you know, a rectangle. So what this does is it turns it back into a rectangle. It renders in everything that that lens can't see. So there's a lot of image and rendering that is being lost on you because you can't see it, but the computer screen can. And when you pair that with recording, your FPS plummets because there's a lot that is uh, being rendered in extra. So I just found a way around that for recording and I don't use this one. So that pretty much does all of the graphics. So now I'm going to show you the post FX stuff. You can find it over here in main parameters. So just go over here down to post FX. So here in post FX you'll see that my game does look different and that's because of this window here so when you first turn this on it's gonna be the dynamic LUT will be on uh, forgive my kitty uh, she's wanting treats but the dynamic LUT will be on usually by default so you want to turn that off and these two boxes will appear now this only shows up on desktop like you can see here but it doesn't show up in VR so just leave that none this is the third person sharpness. It does, in VR, it seems to only affect everything outside of the cockpit. So I found that this really helps compensate for the low quality ground. So I turn this all the way up and it does pretty nice. I don't turn these on because I don't use these views, but turn cockpit sharpness all the way up. It may not feel like it makes a difference, but it does. So color correction, I'm not going to explain every one, but I'll just flip through them and show you what they are just so you've seen them. So default none, I prefer contrast, is fall colors, film, desaturated, night from day. I imagine this one would be good for screenshots. I think that's what most all these are for. This one's a lot like fall colors. And then this one would be good for probably like uh, World War II gun footage if you're doing that. And this is tone mapping. Uh, they have options with them. And so you can really mess with them. But I don't use any of them. I prefer the straight up contrast. But that's pretty much all that there is there. So that's it for the graphics settings for a mid-range graphics card. I hope you guys all enjoyed. If you have any questions, ask just ask them down in the comments section. And before I go, I'm going to show you some VR gameplay and test flight of all these graphics settings in place so you can see what it looks like. And I will see you guys next time. Make sure to subscribe and have a good day. Bye.
have. 